Hey guys and welcome to my channel. Today we are doing, what if Tanjiro was raised by Muzin? Muzin was here to destroy the red-haired child before the boy could destroy his perfect plans, but there the demon was, getting dragged by Nezuko's hand to Tanjiro who waved happily to him, calling him father. With that out of the way, let's begin this what if. Muzin woke up, he could breathe, he could see, he could taste the human blood in his mouth, the remains of the meal he was enjoying with a wine glass his servants prepared in preparation for the final battle against the demon slayers, and he felt his body, a small laugh of astonishment escaping his throat, well of course he was alive, he was a god after all. The demon slayers defeating him under the sunlight was just a cruel nightmare, except. He didn't get nightmares, demons didn't sleep, after all, Abuyashiki Kagaya's last words that rang in his ears were ignored, after all, he was alive, Kibutsuji-sama. We have found the Abuyashiki household, good, Muzin said with a cruel smile, gracing his lips. I will now finish this family once and for all, Muzin's eyes looked toward the sky with shock and horror, there was no way that he was defeated, just like how he was defeated in his dream but his body was disintegrating and he could see the accursed child's face, his hand of foot earrings taunting him once again, he shakily put his hand up to the boy's face to make a final attempt to live. He would turn this boy into a demon, but the Kamadu boy who was unconscious opened his eyes softly and peered into Muzin's own pastel pink eyes, and instead of the anger that seeded through his eyes before, the red-haired boy's eyes turned soft and pitiful, Muzin growled, he wasn't a person to be pitted. He was a god, he plunged his hand into the boy's skin, pumping him with all the blood he could muster, yes. This boy would carry on his cells, his wills, and defeat the sun once and for all, and the world went black, and he saw the last memories of Hantengu flashing before him, showing him the Kamadu girl who defeated the sun, he crushed the hardcover book he was holding in his young Tashikuni form without even thinking, shocked that he was here when he remembers quite well that he was dying just moments earlier. Silencing the gasps of his attendants, with a flick of his tentacle arms, he slunk down onto the floor of the study, trying to understand what part of his perfect plan went wrong and what exactly he was doing again in this house in this young body when he was quite sure it was discarded long before. But he quickly stood up, he wasn't a weak human. He wasn't even just a mere demon either, he was Kibutsuji Muzin, a god, Muzin choked on the air as scores of Nikorin swords pinned all his tentacles and arms to the ground whilst the accursed red-haired boy with Hanafuda earrings stood atop of him with his sword plunged deep into Muzin's chest, no, no, he was given this chance to live again. To defeat these lowlives and become the true ruler over the world, to become a god, but no matter what he did to flail or tear his body out of the hold that Hashiras and other demon slayers had on him, he could see the rays of sunlight permeating through the cracks of the buildings surrounding them. And in front of him was the red-haired child, his eyes soft and pitying once again, Muzin snarled and snapped, trying to do something, anything, to make a last-ditch effort, but the boy's red burning sword and body pinned Muzin to the ground, making him unable to escape the burning rays of sunlight that touched his body and the boy closed his eyes like he was saying a prayer, don't pity me, don't pray for me, I'm not dying, I'm not dead. And Muzin couldn't see the boy's face anymore. Kibutsoji sama Daki and Jutaro, they're both, Muzin cut off the pathetic upper moon demon's exclamation by beheading him within a split second, he growled. Of course I knew that. You pathetic imbecile and he crushed the skulls of the rest of the demons in the room, the progenitor demon huffed, holding onto his throne while clutching his chest, he was alive, he was alive once again, because he was a god, but something inside him shook, were these dreams? Nightmares, one thing was for certain, that boy would have to be taken care of first, before anything else, why do you always have to be the one to kill me? Muzin asked without being able to vocalize it as Tanjiro's sword was stuck in Muzin's throat, but the boy seemed to only respond with that accursed expression once again, the soft, pitying eyes, stop pitying me. Stop killing me. Stop making me feel so weak. And the world went dark once again, his perfect plans were falling apart, he could never defeat the demon slayers, nor kill that accursed red-haired boy with the Hanafuda earrings, he died countless times, and each time, he woke up in a time before the last time he woke up, this should make things so easy and so perfect yet every single 
time, Kamadu Tanjiro, Muzin could barely control his rage and conflicted emotions as he killed the lower moons who were prostrating in front of him with a single sweep of his claws, Kamadu Tanjiro happened, he tried so many times to kill him before he got anywhere near the level of his skills before, yet he either never could, or the demon slayers would band together and defeat him. But every time Muzin was defeated by them, Kamadu Tanjiro's blade pierced into Muzin's body, and the last thing he saw before darkness was his red, soft, pitiful eyes, was this boy fated to kill him, no. That's not possible, Muzin was, is, the god. There is no way for a human to be able to defeat him, maybe he should try putting himself under the sun to see if he could wake up in a time before Kamadu Tanjiro became a demon slayer before he could have any power to defeat Muzin, but he couldn't, because there was something that Muzin could never accept about himself, no matter how many times he died while peering into that boy's red eyes, Muzin was still afraid of dying. How many times has he woken up once again after his death? What was his plan for this time, that was always the hardest part? Whenever he woke up, he could never exactly know what date or time it was. His memories jumbled together and the times he woke up were anywhere from days or months from the last time he woke up. After looking at the date and carefully sorting through his memories, he finally found it, today was the day that he would go up the mountains to the descendants of the first breathers, the Kamadu household, but why did almost eight months pass between the time he last woke up and today? His time loops were never this far apart, but this was good. Even before he started the red-haired boy's path toward killing Muzin, Muzin would annihilate him and his family first. But, would the boy still be able to beat me even if he wasn't a demon slayer yet? Muzin shook the thought away. There was no way for that child to do so, especially without even knowing what demons were, brother. Are you back already? A young boyish voice said as he opened the shoji door widely. Oh, never mind. Who are you, mister? Maybe Muzin was approaching this wrong. Maybe he would have to use his human looking form in order to get all the kamados in one single sweep then he will finally be able to defeat the sun and become a true god, my name is Tsukihiko. I'm actually quite lost. Do you mind terribly if I stay the night? I promise to give you appropriate compensation in return for your hospitality. Muzin said with the manufactured grin he used so much when dealing with humans, the young boy looked up and down at Muzin, seemingly shocked at his light clothing for the weather as well as his western fashion, Okasan. Some weird man is at the front door, Muzin kept up his faux smile as he gently accepted the tea from the mother of the house whilst politely refusing the food. These children and their mother didn't seem like they were eating much anyway. That was probably why he didn't care about consuming their flesh last time, he didn't exactly know why he wasn't killing them just yet. It was easy, just slash their necks, go down to the nearby village where he supposed the red-haired boy was at and kill everyone there, but for now, he gently sipped the tea and waited for Kamadu Tanjiro to come home, Muzin felt him, Kamadu Tanjiro, he would finally defeat that child and then defeat the son, and Muzin slashed the Kamadu family's necks with a single claw. He wouldn't even give them the chance to be a demon, A.H. He heard the somewhat familiar yell and Muzin merely looked toward the sound with wide eyes, what was he doing, standing still and not killing Kamadu Tanjiro? When was the last time someone did that for him, when Muzin woke up, he didn't even care to check the date and rushed out of the doors of the Infinity Castle with one goal in mind, defeat Kamadu Tanjiro, he was most likely even younger than before anyways. He will kill the boy for sure this time, Muzin slowed his pace as he got to the foot of the mountain. He trekked through the snow step by step, anxious and conflicted, wait, conflicted? Muzin's pace became even slower as his eyes made out the small hut that the Kamados lived in and he heard something with his hypersensitive demon hearing, weeping, as he got closer, he saw the whole family outside, their bodies held against each other tightly as they kneeled in front of what looked like a grave. And there was the boy, he looked strangely much younger than before. His red eyes were filled with tears and sobs escaped his throat rather than the angry screams of his attacks, it would be so easy so easy to kill them in one swoop, but instead of flicking one of his tentacles to kill the whole family right there, Muzin trekked closer and closer until he was standing only three meters away from the crying family, 
with his keen sense of smell noticing the stranger coming closer, Tanjiro looked up and his red eyes met Muzan's pastel pink ones. And his sobbing stopped, who, who are you? Mr. The red-haired boy's voice was so young and childish and void of the hardened swordsman's voice who always peered softly into his eyes as Muzan died. I was an acquaintance of your grandfather. He asked me to take care of your family, but it seems I am a bit too late, Muzin replied as he looked at the grave the family was crying in front of, what am I doing? Why am I not killing them, Muzin didn't even know himself, Tanjiro, he was only nine, that didn't seem quite right. The last time he woke up, Muzin was quite sure that the boy was about twelve or thirteen. How could four years pass since his last time loop, was this a way for the gods to taunt him, no, that couldn't be it. He was a god after all, but he was always killed by this boy, every single time, he could just kill every one of the Kamados right now, but Muzin couldn't bring himself to do so. Fear, maybe. No matter what age he was, no matter the lack of training he had, Tanjiro was able to kill him if Muzin harmed him or his family in any way, but there was something else. Muzin would come over to the mountain often, dragging the young Tanjiro with him after he stubbornly trekked down the mountains to sell coal even though he was still only nine years old. His mother was overwhelmed with caring for his five younger children and Tanjiro insisted that he would go down to the mountains and make money to take care of his family, this was just for his own sake, Muzin thought as he convinced himself. If something happens to Tanjiro, something could happen to him. He would bring them food money, clothing a charity that the Kamados were not used to would please, Tanjiro's grandfather has put me into a great debt, he said to Kamaduki as he brought another sack of food and money to the Kamado's shocked expressions, oh yes. Tanjiro's great something grandfather, or at least the first owners of his Hanafuda earrings, gave Muzan such a great debt of almost killing him so that he tried to repay that by trying to kill Tanjiro multiple times but each time, he died, so he played along like he did when he married that human woman called Ray and adopted her young girl a few years into the future. He was spending more time with the Kamadu family's hut than at the Infinity Palace. He would spend more time helping Ki take care of the children than threatening the low-life demons to never speak of his name. He would spend more time reading to Tanjiro, Nezuko, Takeo, Hanako, Shigeru, and Rokuta rather than killing humans and feasting on their flesh. Tanjiro still had his unnatural sense of smell and would ask if he was injured or was fighting someone if Muzin came to his house after a meal and so Muzin would make sure he destroyed any scent of human blood on his skin or didn't need a human right before going to the Kamadu residence, he also made sure that demons knew the price for trying to harm a single hair of the family members by his favorite method, showing the consequences of doing so. Why was he showing so much consideration to these children, it's just so that nothing would happen to Tanjiro and in turn, nothing would happen to him, that was it, when Kamadu Ki remarried Kabutsuji Tsukihiko and he formally adopted her six children, Muzin convinced himself it was to only keep his executioner close and unable to leave his sight, except for Ki, Muzin insisted the children all keep their names as Kamadu and he saw the thankful and relieved looks on all their faces. He wasn't there to replace their deceased father, but Muzin couldn't let them let go of their Kamadu name. After all, Kamadu Tanjiro should never be anyone else other than Kamadu Tanjiro, father. Come here. Tanjiro and I, I defeated a bear. Nazuko exclaimed loudly and grabbed his hand and dragged him into the snow-covered mountain. Muzin's smile suddenly fell as he blinked and his face twisted into a face of horror. No. No. This couldn't be happening. He was here to destroy the red-haired child before he could destroy Muzin's plans, but there Muzin was, getting dragged by Nezuko's hand to Tanjiro who waved happily to him, calling him father, father, the young 15-year-old Tanjiro said as he knelt in front of his father in their palace-like home. I have come to this conclusion. You are a demon, are you not? And Tanjiro looked up to gaze at Muzin with his soft, saddened eyes, the air in the room stilled, Muzin slowly set down his pen and peered up from his work to meet Tanjiro's eyes, yes, I am, Tanjiro. He said after a long pause. What made you come to that conclusion, he asked, Tanjiro looked down at his hands solemnly. A few months ago, 
I ran into two demons and a demon slayer. And with the sword you have given to me, I slashed and severed their limbs, but it would regrow. They ran away but afterward, the demon slayer explained to me what they were. And their scent is similar to yours, it was not exactly human, Musin, only wanting the best for his children and was paranoid that demon slayers or demons would try to harm them, had the best swordsman teach Tanjiro and his siblings how to wield a sword and gifted Tanjiro a Nikarin sword of a dead Hashira, Musin. They slowly walked out to the front lawn of their home and Musin looked at the rays of sunlight peering over the mountains and turned to Tanjiro, Tanjiro. Everything was already completed to make sure our family is able to live a peaceful life, devoid of destruction that I've caused before. You, the eldest, will be the head of the household. Everything was made so that the demons will now be no more. Tell the Abu Yoshiki this and continue living on. You will live on for me. Musin said while cupping his hand softly on Tanjiro's face and looking into his red eyes, and for the first time, Tanjiro's eyes were not the soft, pitying, satin eyes that he always had as he pushed his blade into Musin in his final moments, but rather one of determination and promise and acceptance, and the rays of sunlight touched Musin's skin, it was warm and embracing, Tanjiro struggled slightly against the arms that firmly held his nine-year-old body up the mountaintop. His basket full of coal that he heaved all day to bring down the mountains was carried easily on his kidnapper's back. I told you time and time again, Tanjiro Kuen. Don't go down the mountains by yourself to sell coal, his kidnapper sighed as he chastised the child with his deep, soothing voice. You're going to get kidnapped by someone who isn't me. Well, Tanjiro's kidnapper wasn't really a kidnapper, but Tanjiro pouted, crossed his arms, and childishly looked away with a humph dot. But Okasan is busy with Rokuta and Nezuko is already too busy helping her. As the eldest, I need to work and make money, his kidnapper sighed again, exasperated that he was doing this conversation again. You do realize that you're only nine years old, Tanjiro? You can sell coal, fight monsters, or explore the world when you're older for all I care but until you can protect yourself, you will not be going down the mountains without me, the man said in a firm tone. Tanjiro then peeked up to see his kidnapper's face, and the boy's red eyes met the man's pastel pink eyes, why do you care so much about protecting me? I know you said that you knew my grandpa but you're always helping us. Kibutsuji Musin smirked, amused at Tanjiro's question, I believe that there are deities that will make sure something worse will happen to me if something happens to you. There was much left unsaid, but this was the truth, Tanjiro giggled, you're like a dad, Kibutsuji-san, and as soon as those words left Tanjiro's mouth, both the child and the demon faltered and their smiles dropped, please forget I said anything, the red-haired boy said sorrowfully as he curled up inside the man's arms, Musin looked at the child in his arms with a painful, conflicted look. He was thankful that the child wasn't looking at his expression right now and continued his trek up the mountains back to Tanjiro's house. Musin san Tanjiro exclaimed as he ran and glumped the fedora-wearing, western-clothing-clad demon. His siblings soon followed suit and they one by one surrounded the progenitor demon with smiles and hugs, but Tanjiro's smile suddenly turned into a frown and a worried look as he whipped his face up to meet Musin's pastel pink eyes, Musin-san, are you hurt? Did you get into a fight? You smell of blood, Musin's eyes widened just a tiny fraction, his expression turned into an aloof one as he patted Tanjiro's head softly. Some people tried to attack me while I was coming but because I am strong, I was able to defeat them, the fedora-wearing demon said with a smile that didn't quite seem to reach his eyes. Tanjiro pouted whilst Nezuko exclaimed that Musin was so strong to defeat a person without any weapons, and the young red-haired boy saw Musin's lips finally returning to his soft, prideful smile and he was relieved that everything was the same as always, Musin looked at Tanjiro performing the Hinakami Kagura with a disturbed expression. He was there the whole time from sunset to sunrise, watching the boy make small mistakes but quickly standing back up to continue the dance, it was disturbing to see the breathing style that has haunted him every single time he died being performed without the intention of killing him, yet Musin couldn't avert his eyes throughout the hole because the breath of the sun was too beautiful. Musin san. Could you read the Genji Monogatari again? Nazuko asked with her eyes shining with excitement. 
Her siblings, hearing that Musin would read the story to them again, all crowded around the man and waited patiently, the demon smiled softly as he took out the book and pulled the lamplight closer so that he could see the words more easily. It wasn't quite needed, but it was for appearance's sake, ah. You're reading the Genji Monogatari again? Ki exclaimed softly as she opened the shoji door with snacks in her hands and saw the book in Musin's pale hands. Thank you for reading to the children. Please, have some snacks before you start. The children quickly ran to grab the small table with a plate of senbei and a pot of warm tea from their mother happily. Children, feel free to eat my portion. I've already had dinner before I came, Musin said with a smile and turned his eyes back to the novel. The Kamadu children munched happily on their snacks while they listened to Musin weaving the story of Hikaru Genji appropriate for the children's ages and attention span. When Kibutsuji Musin proposed to Kamaduki, it didn't come as quite a shock to her children. They have known the man for almost three years and he would come to their homes at least three or four nights each week with gifts of food, clothes, and money in his arms, sparingly, Tanjiro would be in his arms, struggling half-heartedly while munching on the snacks that Musin brought for the day. Musin didn't seem too interested in actually courting Ki for the past three years, as he rather seemed more interested in making sure that her children were all safe and cared for. However, that in itself was enough for Ki to say yes to Musin's proposal, the children, when they heard of their mother's remarriage to their favorite adult, became very excited but were hit with the realization that they would have a new father to replace their old one, even though I will adopt all of you into my family, I wish for all of you, except you, Kisan, to keep your last name as Kamadu. I am not someone that could replace your father, the demon said reassuringly, Ki and the Kamadu children all gasped. Surprised at the western clothing-clad man's gracious proposition, and the eldest Kamadu child, who was at first scared that he would have to let go of the memories of his father, looked into the demon's eyes with a determined look, thank you for letting us keep our last names, Musin-san. But I think you were slightly wrong, Musin raised his eyebrow, curious as to what Tanjiro wanted to say, although you may not be our biological father, and you may not be able to replace the fact that he is our father, we all believe that you are also our father and the demon's eyes widened and he couldn't get his blank expression back quickly as he normally could at the boy's statement. Tanjiro's red eyes glistened brightly in the lamplight yet the lamp's brightness seemed inconsequential compared to Tanjiro's smile that lit up the room, we would be blessed to have you as our father, Otosan. The wedding ceremony was a small yet grand affair, there were very few people invited from either side of the party, yet the food and decorations were all lavish and painstakingly put together, the Kamadu family. Ah, uh, would they be called the Kibutsuji family now? We're slightly odd and shocked that their new husband and father was wealthier than they have ever imagined. They have been receiving his help for the past few years with food, clothing, and education. Musin offered to bring them to his house much earlier. But they refused until now because of their father's grave and the memories that were in their small house in the mountains. However, even though they moved to this large estate, the family all planned to return to the hut that was full of memories and happiness as often as they could at Musin, now a father and husband, put his hand on Tanjiro's shoulder as he pointed to his estate that was illuminated by the moonlight, Kamadu Tanjiro. When I pass, this will all be yours. I will pass on this legacy to you, the red-haired boy's eyes widened in surprise and looked up to his stepfather's face, his red eyes peered into his father's pastel pink orbs and smelled the soft grassy smell of content and happiness. Tanjiro could smell the blood that was permeating throughout the small town that he stopped for the night. He was taking his first steps to explore Japan, starting in a small town on the outskirts of Edo, he was met with the sight of a man in a half-maroon, half-colorfully patterned Hayori fending off against two people that didn't smell quite right, they smelled kind of like his father. They also didn't seem to be quite human as Tanjiro saw the woman magically able to direct pieces of patterned fabric as if they were her own limbs to try and grab the man, and Tanjiro ran into the fight, the non-human-looking duo, seeing the new human approaching, smirked as if they were happy to see an animal walk right up to their hunting grounds while the man in the Hayori yelled angrily at him to stay away. Even though the two reeked of danger, the boy couldn't just leave a man to be attacked whilst he was injured and being attacked by these demon-looking people, the male demon-looking man with half-black, 
half green hair held his sickle in front of his face with a smirk and licked his lips. He jumped toward Tanjiro and swung his arms, but Tanjiro caught the weapon with his own sword with enough force to push the arm away and slashed at the demon. A-A-G-H. A demon slayer? But he's not wearing the uniform. The demon-like person cried out and grabbed his injured chest, Tanjiro looked with horrification that the wound he inflicted was patching up almost instantly, he dodged another swing of the sickle and cut off his attacker's arm, yet a new arm grew almost instantaneously, you damn brat. The man yelled, and he growled angrily. He looked at the menace that interfered with the fight he and his sister were having against the demon slayer with absolute fury, but all of a sudden, the man widened his eyes fearfully as if he was hit by horrifying realization, as shit. Daki. We can't fight him. He's, he's him. The man exclaimed fearfully to his companion that was fighting the black-haired Hayori clad man. The man's companion looked confused for a second before her eyes locked onto the boy and her eyes opened equally wide as if she understood clearly as to what the man said, we need to go. Before, before he finds out about this. The woman, Daki, exclaimed and she took off and the man followed suit, they're running away? The man, who was being attacked and clutching his bleeding abdomen, looking at the two demons running away, muttered softly with disbelief. He then quickly turned his gaze to the boy who interfered in the fight, Tomiokaju always had bad luck, he was supposed to just help Yuzui find his missing wives, but he was ambushed by one of the twelve Kazuki. Upper Moon 6 at that. In the past few hundred years, there was no demon slayer who survived fighting an upper moon alone, the upper moon six almost killed him when she split into two, revealing the true upper moon living in the woman's body. And a sickle slashed his abdomen while the woman distracted him with her tentacle-like fabric, when the boy interfered in the battle, Ju was shocked that a regular civilian would rather try to attack these two demons instead of running away. He yelled at him to run away and he ran as fast as he could to stop the upper moon from killing the boy but just saw that the demon would get to him faster than him, I'm so sorry that I couldn't protect you, Ju thought woefully as he saw the upper moon swinging his sickle toward the boy. But instead of being dismembered into two parts as Ju imagined, the boy swung his own sword to parry the upper moon's attacks, the water pillar then made the split decision to focus on the woman for now as her tendrils of fabric tried to attack him. He hoped that the boy would be able to fend off just one more attack while he got closer to him to fend off the upper moon because he knew that no regular human, especially one who isn't a demon slayer, could ever defeat an upper moon, the second attack came when the boy severed the upper moon's arm, just please fend off one more attack, Ju prayed as he kicked at the woman's body to send her flying to the wall, but the upper moon's third attack never came. The demon jumped back as if he was in the presence of the sun instead of the young boy, he and his companion ran away. Juf could only see the backs of the two demons with disbelief and blood dripping down his abdomen, they're running away? He muttered in disbelief to no one in particular, and the water pillar whipped his head to the young red-haired boy, wary as to why the demons would flee at the sight of him, the boy, turning away from the two demons retreating backs, met Juf's azure eyes with concern. Are you okay, sir? The boy asked worriedly and sheathed his sword before running toward Ju. Yes, I just need to stop the blood flow, the black haired demon slayer responded while ignoring the pain from his abdomen for the moment to organize the confused thoughts he had. Who are you? My name is Kamadu Tanjiro. I have a first aid kit, so let me patch you up, the boy said as he helped Ju to a nearby tree and helped wrap and compress the wound. And what is your name, Mr? Ju frowned slightly as he looked over at the red-haired boy. He looked about 15 years old, wore a green and black patterned Hayori, and had a sword on his hip, yet he didn't wear a demon slayer uniform, my name is Tomioka Ju. Are you a demon slayer? The boy looked at him curiously, a demon slayer? What is that, those two who ran away earlier are demons that eat humans. And I hunt them. Why did you fight them if you didn't even know what they were? Ju asked with an incredulous expression. Tanjiro smiled brightly. You were injured and they were ganging up on you. They didn't look exactly quite human. 
When I approached the battle and one seemed to just attack me for getting close, I knew that they must be the enemy. The water pillar furrowed his brows just a bit and looked at the sword on the boy's hip. Do you mind if I take a look at your sword? The boy looked a bit confused but unsheathed it for the water pillar to inspect, and Ju's suspicions were right. This was a Nicaran sword. How did you get this Nicaran sword if you are not a demon slayer? He questioned angrily, narrowing his eyes. Tanjiro jumped a little back at the angry tone. My father gifted it to me before I left on my journey. He said that it would protect me from any human or monster, Ju frowned at the boy's words. It seemed like there was an underlying message there that meant that it would also kill demons, which would mean that the boy's father would know what the Nicaran swords do, was your father a demon slayer? He asked, his voice more mellow as he handed the sword back to the boy, I don't think so. He doesn't wield a sword. Can you tell me more about these demons? The boy's red eyes shone with curiosity, Ju relaxed a little, pushing away the questions he had but felt that the boy wouldn't know the answers to, and responded with the answers to Tanjiro's question, demons were all once human. If a human receives the blood of the progenitor demon, they turn into demons. Demons can only consume human flesh and they are immortal, unable to age or die by normal means. They also kill indiscriminately, their family or loved ones are not exempt from being eaten by their loved ones who turned into a demon. The only weakness they have is being decapitated by a Nicaran sword and sunlight, this sword and sunlight. Tanjiro repeated softly with wide eyes. And demon slayers are the ones who fight against these demons, yes. You have skills that are much better than any regular demon slayers, though. You were able to fend off an upper moon, one of the strongest demons in existence. And you were able to make it run away for some reason, Ju said with narrowed eyes. Do you have any idea why? Not at all, Tanjiro said while shaking his head. I don't think I've ever seen a demon before today. The boy looked at the sword that was still in his hands. Why did father give this to me as if he knew of the existence of demons, Ju didn't know either. Nor did he know how just seeing this boy's face was able to make two demons, one upper moon demon at that, run away as if they were fearful for their lives, the demon slayer core was created to protect humans from demons. If you master the art of breathing, you will be even stronger than you are now. Would you like to learn it and join the demon slayer core? Tanjiro looked surprised at the sudden offer and his first instinct was to accept. He opened his mouth to say yes, but he immediately remembered all his family at home, all awaiting his return. He looked down to the ground, with a sad frown plastered on his lips, thank you for the offer, Tomioka-san, but I think that I will have to think about it. I would have to talk to my father and family members first, Ju nodded, understanding that it was difficult to fight with your life on the line when you had many family members waiting for your return, if you want to ever join, please send me a message. Tanjiro looked up to the blue-eyed demon slayer and nodded back with a bright smile. The red-haired boy, not quite a boy anymore but a teen and the head of his family, placed the final signed document into the completed pile of paperwork inside his father's study with melancholy. It has been four months since he has found out about the existence of demons and two weeks since his father's death, unsurprisingly, just as how his father had told him before he died. Everything was already set up so that Tanjiro would be instated as the head of the Kabutsuji household. Immediately. However, taking on the mantle of the head came with a lot of responsibilities and work such as funeral preparations and paperwork of changing all the deeds to his name, but the chaos actually helped Tanjiro suppress the tears that wanted to always come out ever since his father's passing. Tanjiro, after meeting Ju, figured out that his father was the progenitor demon who killed and destroyed the lives of so many people. But Tanjiro couldn't help but still love his father, even with all the horrible things he did. In his father's final moments, Tanjiro couldn't help but weep silently at the serene scent that vocalized the words I love you, my son, before he dissolved into the warm sunlight. And Tanjiro unfastened the Nicaran sword that was always attached to his hip and laid it gently on his father's desk, he wasn't looking for blood nor confrontation, but rather some semblance of a finale, it was time to meet the Abuyashiki household head, wisteria flowers are beautiful, 
Tanjiro mused as he stood outside the door of the Yabuyashiki residence and gazed at the purple flowers softly. Nazuko was at his side, understanding the importance of this meeting after Tanjiro had told her of the events leading up to his father's death. He couldn't say anything to any of his other younger siblings yet nor to his mother, but they will slowly learn in time, they would know that their father was a demon but still loved them nonetheless. The doors opened and two white-haired twins greeted Tanjiro, Kamado-sama, thank you for coming. Oyakata-sama will meet you inside, Tanjiro nodded and followed them into the residence with Nezuko right on his heels, awaiting him in the courtyard were nine men and women kneeling in front of a black-haired man sitting inside the open balcony facing the gardens, the nine swordsmen and women turned their heads to Tanjiro when they heard his soft footsteps. Tanjiro looked at each of them and was a bit surprised when he saw Ju in the group. When he got to where they were all awaiting him, the red-haired teen gave a polite bow to them, Abuyoshiki Dano, Ashira Dano Tachi, it is a pleasure to meet all of you. One of the nine, a silver-haired man with many scars marrying his face, narrowed his eyes at Tanjiro, who are you to disturb our pillar meeting? He questioned gruffly, he is an important guest in our meeting today, Sanami Kuan. Abuyashiki Kagaya said with a smile and lifted his arm to point to an empty cushion to his side. Please have a seat, Kamadodano, Tanjiro walked into the open balcony, passing the nine men and women and took a seat next to the Abuyakashi head. Nazuko stood passively next to the pillars who two stood up after their leader nodded for them to do so. Thank you for agreeing to meet with me, Abuyakashi Dano, Tanjiro said calmly as he faced the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps. As I have stated in the message, I am Kamadu Tanjiro, the head of the Kibutsuji family, gasps rang out from the small crowd, the leader of the Demon Slayer Corps smiled softly. It is a pleasure to meet you too, Kamado Dano. My name is Abuyoshiki Kagaya. Your letter to me was quite intriguing. You have said that you are from the Kibutsuji family. Do you have any ties to a man named Kabutsuji Muzin? There was a slight pause as Tanjiro closed his eyes and nodded, yes, he is my father, loud, angry exclamations rang out from a few of the Hashira, shocked at the child's statement, demons cannot procreate. Demons cannot also survive under the sun, yet you have done so easily. How are you that demon's child? Kocho Shinobu asked with her brows furrowing, unraveling the turmoil and anger that she always keeps under wraps, my family and I met him for the first time six years ago when my birth father passed away. When I was twelve, he married my mother and adopted my siblings and me into his household. And after his death, I have been appointed as the head of the Kibutsuji household. Kagaya's white eyes gazed deeply into Tanjiro's red orbs, for the past two weeks there have been no demon sightings or attacks. When did your father pass, as you have said, two weeks ago? I would have come to meet you sooner, but I had to finish all the funeral preparations and responsibilities of the new head of the family. He cannot be killed by normal means. How did he pass away? Kagaya asked, he chose to walk in the sunlight, Shinazugawa Sanemi stepped forward with his hand gripping his sword angrily. He... He just chose to commit suicide? I can't believe that. Kibutsuji Muzin cannot be that kind of man. He's a monster who only cares about himself and finding immortality. He exclaimed with his eyes narrowed and seething with doubt and anger, I am not defending the man he once was, but I will defend my father for who he was before he died. I think all of you have noticed the sharp decrease in demons and human deaths ever since six years ago when I met my father for the first time. He has changed and he has chosen to walk in the sunlight out of his own free will. Tanjiro replied firmly as if he was undisturbed by the threatening voice, but soon his bottom lip quivered as he was once again reminded of how his father just dissolved into the sunlight in front of him. And the red-haired teen could not hold back his tears anymore. I know he was a demon, but he was also my father. Before he passed, he told me that he has lived the same timeline multiple times. And each time, I was the one to kill him. Tears dropped along Tanjiro's cheeks while he gripped his Hayori in frustration. I've read the journal he left for me. 
he experienced hundreds of time loops where my sword would be buried within his chest as the sun came up. I was a demon slayer who would kill him no matter how much stronger he was compared to me. I killed my father time and time again, yet he chose to adopt me and my siblings. And he loved us. He truly loved us, that's an absurd story. Especially the fact that he loved you. Demons cannot love. Especially not Kibutsuji Muzen. Yuzui Tenjen muttered in disbelief, yet he accepted his death because he loved us and didn't want a world where demons would roam around and hurt us. He accepted that all things must one day die, including demons. Thus, the demons are no more. My father knows that he changed because of his own selfishness, but the fact remains that they have killed countless humans, so they all passed with him peacefully, then, then what of our revenge? What about the hard work we put into our training in order to get our revenge against him? Abanai Iguro exclaimed angrily. Was it all for naught that my friends and family had to die when all we had to do was wait? Tanjiro shook his head no. That's completely incorrect. Without all of your help in the previous timelines, my father would have destroyed even more lives and never accepted his death. This was only possible because every timeline, all of you were unwavering in your resolve to stop my father. And although I am sad that he is gone, it is undeniable that he needed to pass. Kagaya closed his eyes, contemplating the boy's words, two weeks ago, I knew something changed drastically when I no longer felt pain from the curse that was inflicted on our household due to Kabutsuji Muzen's existence. And I have seen the marked decrease in demons and human deaths ever since six years ago. Furthermore, I have heard of the upper moon demon who ran away from you from Ju. Although I cannot fully fathom the fact that Kabutsuji Muzen experienced a time loop, I do believe that he was your father and you have changed him. And I thank you, Kamado Dano, for changing him. Kagaya said gracefully and dipped his body into a bow, Tanjiro looked very flustered and waved his hands frantically, wait, please don't bow your head to me, Abuyashiki Dano. The red-haired teen dipped his head down into a bow mirroring Kagaya's. I sincerely apologize for all the pain and suffering that my father has caused in his life to you. Your family, humans, and the Demon Slayer Corps. I know that my father's sins are vast and not everyone will be content just with his death, but I promise that I will do my best to help you in any way I can to make sure the Demon Slayer Corps members and all who were affected by demons will be cared for. I also promise that no demon with malicious thoughts will roam the earth ever again. The two heads of their respective households stood back up and looked into each other's eyes. They felt the warm rays of sunlight spreading out into the balcony and touching their skin, and Tanjiro smiled as brightly as the sun, relieved that his father's last remaining wish was fulfilled. That's it for this part, I hope you guys enjoyed this part. If you want more, like this video, hit that notification bell, and maybe even give a comment on your thoughts on the video. And before any of you ask, no I can't continue this specific series due to the story being a one-shot from the author. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next series.